That's what it's about. Why? And you believe that the stars just sit down out there like some permanently fixed things for us to watch out? Time is a fiction. Usually it's 10 o'clock, that's fiction. We decide to make no degrees go through granite and land and fix time from it. It's a fiction. So the truth. So what is time? So why? Why are we on earth? Why man? Having decided why you have human beings on earth, no place else. Why of all the beasts? Does man have the mind? And not dinosaurs and elephants. Why man? Why you have different races and complexions? Migration, you know that. Isn't it? That's the question of migration. How you migrated during the history of man. But the point I am making is and the difference between you and that rabble, that sea of bestiality of there, is supposed to be because you follow theories of causation. And you want to know why things happen. There are three platonic questions that you have to ask yourself. Any epistemologist will tell you. The first question is simple. Why are things as they are and not otherwise? That's the first question you ask. Why are things as they are? And not other, why have five fingers, not six? Mm -hmm. Not eight, not four. Who I five? I'm not otherwise. With five toes. Those of you do that with six, I know. Why did my husband leave me? Why are we separated and not otherwise? Yeah, you ask that too. That's the platonic question. You have to ask it. Some, you get some stupid answers sometimes. Why does the apple fall to the earth? Because the earth is attracted to the apple and vice versa. Is a stupid answer. <laughs> and any end is stupid. You know. But it's a correct question. Hmm? The second platonic question is, <clears throat> in what assumption have I left out in considering this matter? Always ask yourself that. Have I left out any assumption? Here am I looking at a problem, mobilizing at LaGuardia or shopping at the supermarket or whatever. But before you start to solve whatever the problem is, is there some assumption I've ignored? Make sure you have everything there. Make sure that you have everything there. Because if you leave out an important factor, you get strange answers. Very, very strange answers indeed. Arrested in mathematician got some very strange answers because he, he, he forgot what the Euclidean definition of a straight line was. And he was dealing with straight lines. That's the assumption he was making. You've got to remember all of What assumption? Hey, this man hasn't come home because this is his, oh my God, his parents' anniversary. And he's on his way home from work, he must have stopped. You forgot that assumption. Instead of getting to power or why he didn't come home, there's some assumption you missed. These are, these are the questions. You are, they lead you to causation. They lead you to causation. And you always do. That's what makes the Kuzas of this world. That's what makes the Leibniz of this world, the Riemann, the Cantor. That is what makes them. Like the Shakespeare's and the children, look at them. They ask why all the time. And, and they catalyze you, try to get you to ask yourself, why? Why are you here? 
you surely you must be here to advance the human condition to make sure that human beings survive, grow, develop, on earth. This is irrelevant to whether you call yourself Catholic, which merely means universal. It's all Catholic means. Or Protestant, which merely means you protest against the Catholics. That's all it means. Hmm? But that is what this movement is about. What all academies of Platonism have been about. Unless you can ask yourself those questions. You will never get truth. My, I remember my mother, who was one of these strong religious types, <clears throat> used to cuss Pontius Pilate. Her point was, he had a great opportunity. You see, this was a Jewish holiday. And on such a holiday, he had the right to reprieve anybody condemned to death. At the time, there were two persons condemned to death. In the place, Jesus and Barabbas. Now, Barabbas was a very known thief and politician, and they didn't betray his movement. He's violent, but they, and Jesus, you know, what he was. And you know what Pilate did? He reprieved Barabbas, and let Jesus go to the crucifixion. She says, a damn fool. Barabbas was more dangerous than my way. He's a violent man, he's a good athlete. Terrorist, you know. You don't have to have this information of that. You know. Bad. She had he had a great opportunity, an escape route, but he found his pile was no ass. He was related to Tiberius Caesar. And he was no ass. He saw that this is a more dangerous in the long run thing than Barabbas. My mother never stopped to ask herself. Why were things as they were not otherwise? <clears throat> Even when they came to mind, look, what, look, look how many Christians, look, she's a Christian. <laughs> she's a Baranian, she's a Christian. Hmm? <laughs> you have to ask yourself this. If you learn nothing else tonight, <clears throat> this little public dictum, dictum, as I've been in, about the Platonic causation, validity of causation, and why are things as they are, is very, very important indeed. Very important indeed. There's a difference between sanity and insanity. Because the Newtonian system is insane. The astronaut went into outer space and discovered that Kepler was right. <laughs> then you send along this <laughs> fellow used to work at the Swiss patent office, getting in trouble with the Nazis, he come over here, and he got a man Newton. He says, look, when the speeds are astronomical, Newton would not apply. When the slow speeds, Newton is right. So what we need is a transformation factor. You know? And we call that oh, one upon root one minus the other C squared. That's transforming factor. You know? So all you have to do is to use Newtonism, use it, blah, blah, blah. Nonsense. It's the stupid because that assumes that there's no universal law governing all facets of the universe. But you have to amend and change law according to where you deal. It starts from this stupid hypothesis that only what is measurable can be studied. They believe this crap, you know. You can't measure it, you can't study it. You can't measure it, tell these lunatics. You can't be studied. So somebody goes into Paris and keeps a rod, 39.37 inches long, which is called a meter. And that is the fixed length of a meter. It doesn't matter the electrons are flying about the place and all that, and the rod is doing a Fitzgerald Lorentz contraction up and down. You know, it doesn't matter. That's the meter. There's no problem that a guy could run 100 meters in Paraguay and another guy run 100 meters in Alaska, not the same distance, from how they measure it. Yeah. No, that, that doesn't. But you have this measuring system. What can be measured? How many times in a gallon? 
you know, how many feet? Yeah, feet per second per second, yeah, that kind of crap, you know. <laughs> how you transform from the CEGS to the other system and this measurement. And in the midst of all this measuring, midst of all this, you don't get truth. But why? Why are things like that in our world? Why are things as they are and not otherwise? Why is it that according to what is written there, quite right, only five regular polyhedron, he says, sun, sun, can be constructed in a discrete manifold, invisible space. That's what you should see. Why only five? Why not 50, a million? Why only five? Tetrahedron, cube, you know, you do that for octahedron, I got five, I got eight. Well, that must mean that the, the discrete manifold, what you can see around you, is limited. The fact that only five are known for me, this is limited in harmony. Therefore, the harmony that you see in front of you is a limited harmony. It is an absolute harmony. It's like seeing shadows on the walls of a cave, as Plato says in the dialogue. Or, as St. Paul says, seeing through a glass darkly. It's limited. <coughs> there are a limited number of things that perception will reveal to you. That's what that means. It doesn't mean that you're going to find a straight line and do the epidemic and all that. You won't see that. No such thing as a straight line exists. All the rotation, all the motion. All it means is that the harmony of the discrete manifold, the visible, perceptible world, is a limited harmony. There is no absolute space, as Newton says, an absolute time, you know. And I will live three, four, and twenty years, and all this mystical poppy cock, if I stay on earth, and we the same age, and you go away, and you come back ten years later, you young and I'm old, all that mystical shit doesn't happen. You think that Shepard and those guys went into the space and came back younger? Do you see that? <laughs> well, you check it out. But the worst thing you can do is to, because that's a form of religion. The issue today, and this is clear from you if you see the implications of King Leo, is that we have lost our faith in science, in knowledge. We are willing to relax to some religious cultism whatsoever. A woman says in one Donnie, you show, I don't want to have a nuclear war, I have a personal God. He will protect me. <laughs> they lost their faith in it, you know. Don't let the sign. I think Charles Manson means go and live in a commune, follow revelation. You've you, you got revelation. You know, Manson is a great believer. Find out many guys in the star in the face of the beast. In revelation, we have a chat with them. But Manson believes in it. And uh, what do you think he means? You don't want science, that's not a commune. You, you use the dope, you know, you read, school when you get food when you want, you kill when you, you know, bestiality. You don't want science. And there are people out there like that. People who are, the, the problem with environmentalists is that they don't think through. That's the problem. It's one weak point. Nobody wants somebody to have ways to kill people. But if you have a theory that you must not have manufacturing, mankind won't survive, that's the point. That is the point. And the reason why things are like that and not otherwise is because mankind, look, 10 million people going to the New York area and very little food is going to the New York area. You go in there. 4% of which is imposed, 2.87%. Uh, American manpower is invested in agriculture. And they could keep, at least in New York area, no about Because of technology and science. And that's why things are 
or as they are not otherwise. And you want to know why there's no and disco and prostitution and the levels they have and crack and AIDS? Why things are like that and not all of Because the oligarchy wants it so. That is the point you have to make. You want to know all these rights you've been fighting for in the 60s? <clears throat>